Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and in today's video we have a special guest star. Some say that he was born as the direct result of an illicit liaison between the USS Atlanta and HMS Leander and that he can undress a Congo down to her stock configuration using only the power of his mind. All we know is he's called the Stig. Yeah, if you don't watch Top Gear you'll have absolutely no idea what I've been going on about. Uh, this is, he's called the Stig, and he's in the all-new, all-singing, all-dancing Soviet Tier 5 destroyer, the Podvoisky. But this isn't really so much about the Podvoisky, so don't expect a detailed analysis of the ins and outs of what this ship can do. This isn't a review. This is one of those replays where, right from the beginning, as soon as I started watching it, I knew it was going to be good. There is so much stupid on display in this battle. It It just defies imagination. And he's called the Stig, because that is in fact the name of the player who submitted this replay, is going to be right at the centre of it. And it doesn't take long for it to start. Somebody on the enemy team is determined to be the first ship spotted. He just unloaded a full salvo into that small and inoffensive island, rapidly disappearing off to the right-hand side of the screen. Somebody else on the Stig's team is determined to outdo him and see who can be spotted first, and therefore the first one sunk. But no, it's going to the enemy Kirov, spotted at a range of 15.5 kilometers, and therefore instantly targeted by anybody with a gun, because he just couldn't keep his finger away from the left mouse button, despite the fact that he had nothing to shoot at. And don't worry, we are going to be seeing more of that Kirov very, very soon. But before that, there's even more stupid happening. This time on the Stig's own team. I always make it a habit whenever I enter a battle and I see somebody whose name is already pink to stay as far the hell away from them as possible. And, uh, yeah. I'm not quite sure what was going on back there. <laughs> but, uh, no big surprise that a pink-named player was right at the heart of it. And there's our little friend in the Kirov. Don't worry, we're going to be getting a closer view of him uh, before too long. Meanwhile... He's called the Stig, has made it into the Bravo cap circle, and he's made it this far this fast, because probably the most outstanding feature of this brand new Soviet Tier 5 destroyer leader is its speed. Typical of Soviet destroyers, it is blisteringly fast in a straight line. It'll do 42 knots unmodified, and with the engine boost running, 45.4. It has, of course, a horrendous turning circle. Again, typical of Soviet destroyers, 700 meters. That's more, by the way than the turning circle of the USS Colorado. <laughs> and oh, here's that Kirov I promised you a closer look at earlier. Let's just count the number of ways this Kirov fucks up. First, he gave his position away right at the start of the game at a range of 15.5 kilometers by firing his guns at absolutely nothing. Next, he sails a thinly armored cruiser broadside on to within four kilometers of a smokescreen in a contested cap circle. He then decides that he doesn't want to use the hydroacoustic search consumable that the Kirov comes equipped with to tell him A, what's inside the smokescreen, and B, to give him warning of the torpedoes that are inevitably going to be fired out of it. He doesn't even seem to think it's necessary to point his guns at the smokescreen. At several points, you can quite clearly see his guns are actually pointing straight up into the air. And finally, he commits the cardinal sin <laughs> of not even firing his own torpedoes into the smokescreen. The Kirov comes with pretty much exactly the same torpedoes as the Podvoisky. Same speed, same shitty 4 kilometer range, but if the Podvoisky can hit you with torpedoes, then the Kirov can hit the Podvoisky as well, but nope. He didn't even fire his torpedoes into the smoke. Ordinarily, that would be more than enough stupid for any one video, but when the mighty Jingles promises you stupid, you get more than you can handle. I won't consider my job done unless you exit this particular YouTube video at least 30 IQ points dumber than you were when you started watching. <laughs> Next up. Uh, well, first of all, Stig's been spotted. So, we're just going to count the number of ways that the enemy Congo over there should have known that there's a destroyer lurking in this channel. First, one of his teammates has just been obliterated by a destroyer in the middle of the cap circle here at Bravo. And that's right next to this very handy torpedo-sized channel between these two islands that the Congo is about to pass. But, well, in the heat of battle, 
perhaps he wasn't paying attention to the various messages that pop up on screen. But regardless, that's still one indication that there's an enemy destroyer about to feast on his tears. The second indication, of course, was that Stig was actually spotted by the Kirov's spotter aircraft and the Congo has just launched his own. Now, why would he launch a spotter aircraft under these circumstances? He's got a solid wall of rock between himself and anything that he could be pointing his guns at. He's already got a range on those guns in excess of 20 kilometers. He doesn't need the extra range. So he must have launched that spotter aircraft in an attempt to spot Stig's ship. So that does indicate that there is at least some thought going on behind what this Congo is doing. And the fourth and final way that the Congo should have known that he's about to be made to look like a blithering idiot on YouTube is that when his spotter aircraft failed to detect he's called the Stig because he's in a smokescreen, there's a smokescreen! <laughs> there's a smokescreen in the channel that you're about to sail past. Smokescreens are kind of known to be infested with things that like to fire torpedoes, but perhaps he's taken account of all the various different warnings that he's had so far, and he's no, he's going to sail within two and a half kilometres of the smoke screen. <laughs> and at that range, look at this, and he knows that there's something here, because his guns are pointing this way, and yet he still thought that somehow that was a good idea. But the stupid is not done yet. We're about to go into stupid overload. While the Stig was busy relieving the Congo captain of the burden of having to do his own thinking for the rest of this match, a T-22 destroyer out of Wyoming had just steamed right into the cap circle behind him. Stig still has 30 seconds before his torpedoes are going to reload. His smoke screen has gone. He is detected. Even if his torpedoes were ready to go, he couldn't fire them because he doesn't have the firing angle. He's got his nose of the ship pointing into the island, which means he has to slowly reverse while spotted at point-blank range from a T-22 destroyer and a Wyoming battleship. And yes, he has been hit. But those are the secondaries from the Wyoming. There's no human intervention going on here. That's the AI gunners going, oh look, there's a destroyer over there, perhaps we should shoot at it. The same cannot be said for the captains of the T-22 and the Wyoming. Oh look, his torpedoes are reloaded. There's something about spotting an aircraft carrier that just suddenly turns people into mouth-breathing, window-licking morons, despite the fact that there's been an enemy destroyer spotted within four kilometers of you for 30 seconds, and no, we're going to shoot at the aircraft carrier. <laughs> and it's only when the Wyoming eats three torpedoes and hands, he's called the Stig, the High Caliber Award on the Silver Platter, that he even begins to pay the slightest bit of attention. The T-22, of course, paying no attention. And so, he's dead. Now the Wyoming secondaries are still peppering, he's called the Stig, with some surprisingly effective fire. And an Isakazi has just joined the fight, and he is well inside the torpedo range of the Isakazi. The Wyoming has finally used his damage control consumable, so he's no longer taking damage from flooding. But now he's on fire. <laughs> And he's just used his damage control ability, so that's going to stick. Stig's unbelievable run of luck is about to come to an end, however, because the Wyoming had high explosive loaded for shooting at the Langley, and does some remarkably good shooting there, actually. Firing at and hitting a stealth destroyer inside a smokescreen with his main battery high explosive shells, and does a considerable amount of damage, and sets it on fire. And he does the right thing, turns nose on towards the inevitable torpedoes launched from the smokescreen, but when he dodges the first set of torpedoes, he thinks, I've got you now, you little Russian bastard, and turns broadside on. But he didn't count the torpedoes, did he? <laughs> that was only one salvo that he dodged. He didn't dodge the second. And there's the Isikazi. But where are his torpedoes? Don't forget, he's called the Stiggers inside a smokescreen. He's not going to see the torpedoes until it's too late. And that's why he's taking steps to get out of the smokescreen, so, well, he doesn't want to be there when the torpedoes arrive. And if there were any torpedoes, he would have seen them now, surely. Why didn't the Isikazi fire torpedoes into the smokescreen? It was at a range of less than six kilometers. He had nothing else to shoot at. Maybe he just fired them at somebody else and he was caught on the reload. Let's go back and find out. The Isikazi has torpedoes that either have a 39 or a 42 second reload. And that's completely stock. That's without factoring in equipment fits or captain skills. So in reality, it's probably considerably shorter than that. The Isikazi first gets spotted on the map 
at 13 minutes and 15 seconds, which is exactly when he's called the Stig, was reversing around to get his torpedoes away at that Wyoming after being hit and set on fire by the Wyoming secondaries. And at that point, right as he goes undetected again, it is entirely possible that he'd fired his torpedoes at the friendly destroyer, who's located slightly further to the north, just outside the Alpha Cap Circle. So let's just assume, for the sake of argument, that this is when he's fired his torpedoes. Now he's detected again. And that's at 12 minutes and 47 seconds. So, assuming he had fired his torpedoes at that enemy destroyer for the north, he's unlikely to have reloaded his torpedoes by now. So let's say they're still reloading, and he's waiting for that Wyoming to clear his line of fire so he can take a safe shot. And it's at this point where Stig nukes that T-22. The Isakazi is inside his 7km torpedo range. He has had a minute to reload, and the Wyoming has completely cleared his arc of fire, and is heading safely well away from any torpedoes that could possibly be in the water. Maybe the Isikazi is firing his torpedoes at something else. I don't think so. But for one, he's aiming and shooting at he's called the Stig, and two, look at the map. There isn't another enemy ship within 10 kilometers of him. And that's when Stig pops his smokescreen and slows to a halt. Now this, of course, makes him a sitting duck for any torpedoes fired into that smokescreen from an Isikazi who right now is exactly four kilometers away, well inside torpedo range, and at this point has had enough time to reload all of his torpedo tubes twice over. And yet he never fires any torpedoes. How do you know that, Jingles? He might have fired and they may have just missed. Stig wouldn't see them because he's inside the smoke. Well, yeah, but those dive bombers attacking the Wyoming are outside the smoke screen. They wouldn't have any problem spotting the torpedoes. In fact, they flew right over the top of the Isikazi. And those torpedo bombers would have no problem spotting any torpedoes fired by that guy. But none of them spotted any. Because he didn't fire any. <laughs> He's had over a minute. In that length of time, he could have fired six separate salvos from his three twin torpedo launchers. But for some bizarre reason, he just seemed to forget he was in a Japanese destroyer. Still, it's possible he thought he had better things to do. Maybe he's going for that friendly Kirov further up to the north. He would be a substantially easier target for an isikazi class destroyer than, for example, the Podvoisky here. And it's entirely possible that that was the Isakazi's intention. I mean, there's a lot more damage to be farmed on that Kirov, for example, and he will have seen the Kirov by now as he headed up between the gap in that little channel over there. But, well, it's around about now that something else grabs his attention. Yep, just like before, there's something about spotting an aircraft carrier that just makes otherwise level-headed players completely lose their shit. <laughs> I don't know what it is, I cannot explain it, but it's a fact. To be completely fair to the Isakazi, from that position, there's no way he's ever going to hit that bogue with his torpedoes. He's inside range, but the bogue is heading in the opposite direction, and there's a convenient little island that he is, in fact, ducking into cover behind. But if the Isikazi hadn't fired his guns, well, the bogue would have spotted him anyway. But he could have remained undetected simply by sailing away from him, especially since he has to know he's in firing range of a Kirov. And Stig's guns too, he's just set him on fire. The Isikazi now stops shooting, doesn't have any choice, he's got nothing to shoot at, the bogue's ducked around the side of an island. And with this island between himself and the Isikazi, Stig can no longer see him either. He's managed to piss the bogue off, even if he couldn't sink him, because the bogue has just recovered and relaunched his dive bombers in an effort to sniff him out. And we know that right now, that Isikazi is more than seven kilometers away, because that's the Podvoisky's surface detection range, and oh, now we know he's within seven kilometers. And that's also the Isikazi's torpedo range, and there he is. But it's not really the Isikazi's torpedoes that Stig should be worried about at this stage, because he has just over a thousand health remaining. And the Isikazi's guns are actually, surprisingly, every bit as good as the Podvoisky's. They both have that five second reload and exactly the same turret rotation speed. And so the Isikazi player succumbs to what I can only describe as his second major rush of shit to the brain in this particular match. Earlier on, he forgot that he had torpedoes when he should have been using them. And now he seems to have completely forgotten that he's got guns that are every bit as dangerous as the ship shooting at him. Except until it's far too late and there's Kraken Unleashed a thousand points, and game over. I don't think I've seen that many idiots in one place at the same time since Hitler said, oh I know, here's a good idea, let's all invade Russia, I'm sure we'll be done by Christmas, and the German general staff said, great idea, mein Führer. <laughs> 
To be fair to the Isakazi, he certainly wasn't the worst culprit, but the Kirov, the T-22, the Wyoming and the Congo? I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> just, it just defies explanation. Maybe it was just bringing more onto work day. Well, I don't know, you come up with a better explanation. <laughs> it's as good a solution as any. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Stig, thank you so much for sending that one in. It amused me a lot. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.